All right, I'm back with another episode of Slaughter University. I have missed you guys. Let me tell y'all something. You can see by the way I look that this has been a rough month. You know what I'm saying? Usually I try to at least brush my hair, put my do-rag on, get a haircut, all that stuff before I get up on here. But I am not doing that no more. You see how rough I look? This is a reflection of the month that I just had. You know what I'm saying? But God is good. I'm alive and I made it. And that's all that matter. I hope your guys' July was good as well. You know? Or challenging or whatnot. But if any of y'all had a July like I had a July, then guess what? This is the episode that you want to be here tonight. I'm not hiding my hair. So what? Yes, I got my fro going. Beard all scruffy. And I got the Peace Hut shirt on. So you know I'm about to deliver. All right. So over this last month, the time I've had to reflect in the word and talk to God, um, so many different topics. So many different topics have hit my mind. But because these topics hit my mind, I was like, Lord, what you want me to say? What you want me to do? He said, you know what? We're going to talk about all of them. Every last one of them, Chris. We're going out there today, and we're going to talk about every last topic. So the last hour and a half I spent in my prayer closet, I said, you know what? I got to write this stuff down. Because usually I just get on here and freestyle, and then we be starting off talking about the 12 disciples, and then we end up talking about the 12 Hashira at the end. I don't know. We just be going all over the place on Slaughter University. But tonight, we're going to talk about some things. So the main thing, what I want to start off with is cycles. If any of you have been struggling with being caught up in a cycle, but see, like me, People be talking to me and telling me things. Oh, the word says this. And the word says that. And God's word is true. But my question is, how do I get out of this cycle? Because I'm tired of this cycle. Just like a menstrual cycle, women be tired of five to seven days. I'm tired of this cycle. Constantly being in a cycle. Jesus, I need out this cycle. And I think what a lot of people do, don't realize that you need the word of God that is first and foremost. But how do I use it? How do I use the word of God to break this cycle? It's not a scripture as far as I know. It's in the Bible that says, if you just say, in Jesus' name, I break the cycle, the cycle is broken. Because every cycle has a root, right? But we're going to get into all that. I even got me handy dandy notebook today. Because we're going to talk about it. So what is a cycle? A lot of y'all know what cycles is. But for those who don't, a cycle is just a stronghold that the enemy has trapped you in. Usually you're doing the same thing, expecting different results. So a lot of times, cycles are insanity. You can have so many different cycles. I can't go through all the cycles that you could possibly go through in a season in your life. But I will focus on one or maybe two. So... The main thing about a cycle, I want you guys to understand that the cycle itself, the cycle itself, what's going on, princess? How you doing? I'm glad you're here, sis. The cycle itself is not the beginning. The cycle is what you just got caught up in. It's what the enemy uses to keep you going around the same circle, the same circle. So, I'm going to give you an example. Growing, growing up, when I started working, I first started working at 16. I think I turned 17 a week later. Back, 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 back in the day. I know y'all, some of y'all was born in 2000. Ooh, Jesus. Back in the day. So, one of the cycles that I always got caught up in, and like I say, when I come here, y'all, I ain't never come in here to talk about nobody else, if none, I can't speak on myself. One of the cycles I always got caught up in was the quitting the jobs and leaving the jobs. The quitting the jobs, the leaving the jobs. The quitting the jobs, the leaving the jobs. All the time. And I feel like the reason why God put that cycle on my mind is because a lot of people, especially in our, around our age group, suffer with the same exact thing. We're suffering with getting caught up in these cycles. All right. So I'm going to talk about the root cause 
of these cycles and what's keeping you in these cycles. It all starts with understanding who your enemy is. You have to understand Satan. You have to understand that this is an ancient spirit. Can I just pause there for a second? Because I feel your Holy Spirit. Who do y'all think Satan is? Because sometimes I feel like we as believers feel like that we can beat Satan in our flesh. But even Jesus himself had to defeat Satan with the word. Do y'all not understand that this is an ancient spirit? An ancient spirit that has been there since the beginning of time. Right? Not, well, beginning of creation. Not beginning of time. Because only God's been there since the beginning. And he has the same tricks and the same tactics. Right? But so many of us feel like, oh, it's the quitting the job that's the problem. Oh, it's the falling into lust that's the problem. Oh, it's the cigarettes. It's, baby, that's just a byproduct. See, Satan has already been planning your downfall. From, from from the beginning. And every time you get in your prayer closet, oh Lord, I come against the cycles right now. Oh Father God, I tear down the stronghold. Oh Lord, I march in the camp of the enemy and I send confusion in the name of Jesus and I want you to rain sulfur and I want you to rain fire and I want... Shut it. Shut it. I'm not saying all that is not good. But you ain't... You ain't scaring nobody with that. Because if you don't know how to break the root of the cycle, you can do all that tan down, all that sin and confusion, all you want to. Blind the eyes of the enemy. You can do all that you want to. But you know what the devil gonna do? You don't know the pattern. You don't know how you fall into the cycle. So you can pray against the cycle all day. But if you don't know how to break the pattern of the cycle, if you don't understand the playbook, see, you just don't get on the NFL football field and think that Patrick Mahomes is throwing the touchdown. Just, eh. He runs a play. They run plays up to that big one. Uh, touchdown. And I got scriptures for all my references. All my references. Right? What God showed me in my pattern, and I'm going to start with my pattern, because I ain't talking about nobody else. I'm going to talk about Chris tonight. And if you can relate, can you say amen? What they say, say out. So what happened with me was I would quit jobs. Oh, I don't like my manager. Oh, they not finna talk to me like I'm crazy. Oh, they chewing bubble gum, and I like double me. Whatever the reason was, as I got older, my immature reasons for quitting jobs stopped. But I realized the cycle of quitting jobs was still happening. My reasons got better, but the cycle kept going. I'm going to drink some water because y'all still, you know, y'all was finna get ready to, you know, binge watch something on Amazon Prime. So I'm going for you to cut the TV off and listen to what I'm, what I'm saying. Even though my reasons for quitting got better, my cycle was still quitting. Hold on. Am I saying anything's wrong with quitting a job? Absolutely not. But I can't be quitting jobs and I got reoccurring bills. When I got to look after myself. When I got to look it up. What's going on, sis? When I got to look after all this stuff that I got to take care of. Some of us got children. Some of us got spouses. Some of us got fiancés or boyfriend and girlfriends or a mama we taking care of or anything like that. We got all these issues going on and we feel like just because we walked in that we said, man, we this person got one more time to say something to me. They got one more time to say something to me and I'm going to walk out. And we say that with confidence like what we're doing is the right thing. No, guess what? You are absolutely right. You don't have to stay anywhere you don't like, but it is a way to go about it. See, in the book of James, it talks about how God gives wisdom to all those who ask unbegrudgingly, without rebuke. You know what I'm saying? So wisdom is, yes, Keisha, yes, man, man, leave the job. Leave the job. But leave it the right way. 
Look for another one. Start the job. Then put in your two-week notice. Okay, y'all didn't want to hear that. Y'all didn't want to hear that because y'all like, but let me tell you something. All I got to do is call my mama. And if my mama say that I'm not wrong, then I'm leaving. Your mama ain't going to help you pay them bills. Unless your mama just living a prestige lifestyle in the upper echelon where she can pay your bills and hers, your mama ain't going to help you pay your own bills. And then when you look deeper into it, that shouldn't even be your reason. Your reason should be regardless of what, regardless of what um, the reason for quitting is, let me maintain a certain level of professionalism at all times. That's what the verse from Colossians come in. Do everything as if you have done it unto the Lord. That, that should be your goal. How would Jesus leave this job? How would Jesus conduct himself on this job, right? So I was caught in that cycle. I'm like, man, you know what? I got a good reason. Now, I remember back in the day when I had crazy reasons for leaving a job. Just whatever we got going on. And then, as I got older, my reasons actually started making sense. But I'm like, why am I still in this cycle? What is going on, man? Why is it that I'm, I'm, I'm quitting and then I'm struggling until I find another job? And it's like you're stuck in a cycle of insanity. See, you, you got to understand something. No matter who's won that job, you got that job because God gave you that job. Let's not get it twisted. Let's not, let's not, let's not mistake that for nothing. God gave you that job. God gave you that job for you to take the finances and steward them properly. You are willingly forfeiting and quitting the job or doing something to get fired, giving people the bullets to shoot you with, not working unto the Lord. And then when you without funds, you like, but God. And, uh, and every time God still sustains you, God still holds on to you. God still keeps you. But you understand that's grace and that's mercy. That's grace and mercy. God is not providing for you because you was right for what you did. He's providing for you still because you're his child. So, some of your cycles might not be jobs, but I had to get to the root. I had to get to the root of the job, but how could I get to the root of why I was leaving these jobs if I didn't understand who's the one that got me in the cycle? It's Satan himself who knows me. He knows my playbook. He knew my father. He knew my mother. He knew my father and mother before them. It's so easy to get me in a cycle. Let me tell you. So what God showed me was you quit off of emotion. You are lacking emotional self-control. Because my thing is this. If you can't stay on the job long enough, take a little bit more persecution on your job long enough just to find another one, how can you suffer persecution for Christ until he returns? It's not making no sense because you folded and quit when you was on the job. So now when you're being persecuted as a believer in Christ, you're going to fold on that job too because you are being led by your emotions. So to the point, God showed me that it was an emotional reason. And I said, okay, God, I get, I'm being emotional. But how did I get here? How did I get to the point of emotions, to the point to where I want to quit? And then that's when God showed me, Chris, the cycle is quitting the job. Quitting the job, struggling, getting another job. Every time you get another job, you have to rebuild again. You got to get back on top of your bills. And by the time you get to the point where now you can start saving and doing other things, you quit again. That's the cycle. Lord, I get it. I be emotional. Lord, I apologize. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and I repent. He said, Chris, you have to understand how the devil works. You just don't walk in a job and say, I'm going to quit. He starts the very moment that you get the job. The very moment that you get the job. Because a lot of us Christians have it confused. 
a lot of us believers have it confused. We get a job and we always go into the workplace. And, and mind you, it might not be job for you. You can just take out a job and put whatever cycle that you feel like you're in. But when we get to that job, we feel like, oh, I got God on my side. And when I get in here, everything is just going to bow down to me because I'm a believer in Christ. Let me tell you something. We are supposed to set the atmosphere wherever we go. But let me ask you this. Why would you have to set the atmosphere in a place if the atmosphere wasn't already messed up? You are not walking into a perfect atmosphere in your job. So this is what the devil does. All right, y'all. He talking all his principalities, all his all his minions, all his demons, and I'm just role playing. This this is just what happened. What's going on, bro? This 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 this, this was happening. All right, so so I'm gonna use my brother Christian for an example. My name Christian. So Christian, go get a job, right? Hope you don't mind me using your name, bro. <laughs> so Christian, go get a job, right? So Christian been praying. He he just came out of a struggle. He didn't like his last job. He liked what he heard in his interview. He's ready to work. Oh, man, he got, ever since they said they hired him, he been praising, he been worshiping, he been in his word, he been doing all these things, right? Just follow me. Please follow me. Please follow me. So Christian goes into work feeling untouchable, right? He goes into work like, yeah, man, God brought me here and, and this is, and, and this is, God, I anoint this place in your name and this is where we at right now. So this is what the devil do. Hey y'all, leave him alone. Leave him alone. And the demons, they follow, they follow their leader to the T. They follow Satan to the T. Right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we we follow, we, we follow, we follow, uh, 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 you, my bad, bro. Your name ain't Christian. Your son is young black Christian. My bad, brother. I love you. But we gonna follow, we gonna keep, we gonna stick with Christian. So the demons and the principalities, they lay back. They lay back, right? They say, all right, all right. So now Christian is going to work. One month. Oh, hey, Mr. Chris, what's going on, man? Shaking hands. Uh, you you meet new co-workers. Everything great. Everything fine. And, and guess what happened? You just, oh, man, I'm just, this is my yeah, yeah. Then my little yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm, I'm kicking it, bro. You know, I'm feeling good. In his new job. And the devil was like, mm -mm. just, just lay back. Don't mess with him. Don't mess with him. Yeah, see, he 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 slipped up and came in late one day. But don't entice his manager to say nothing. Let her turn a blind eye to him. Let her let her turn a blind eye to him, right? So Christian just going on about it, you know what I'm saying? He working, going hard. He love this job so much, he working overtime today. He working overtime. He don't even want to go home and get on the game. He working overtime today, right? And the devil is just patient. The devil is more patient than you. And he just said, man, like, yo, uh-huh. Don't worry. And his demon's like, yep. Mm -hmm. Just let him chill. And see, what happens is, you think that the devil starts planning you to get in this cycle at your job. No, he makes your job a place of peace. He makes your job peaceful for you. And let me reframe that. The devil can't give peace. Only God can give peace. He don't come with the issues. He don't touch you in that season. He let you go to work three, four months, maybe, whatever. What he started to do while you're so focused on your new job, you're not staying vigilant. So what he does, he might stir up problems in your relationship, right? So you already came to work late once. Nobody said nothing to you, right? Nobody said nothing to you. Then he, then you slip up and you say, you know what? I didn't eat breakfast this morning. Maybe I could be a few minutes late because I'm going to stop at Bojangles and get me a Bowberry biscuit with the sausage added on it because I saw that on Facebook and I want that. I'm going to go get that. Right? So now you're two, three minutes late. And it's harmless. It's two, three minutes. And the whole time, the manager is being talked to by a spirit. The spirit is telling the manager, don't say nothing. Just remember it. Still acting like everything is fine. You know what I'm saying? Now, the devil, while you're so preoccupied on this new job, 
the devil say, okay, I'm going to stir up problems in his personal life. Whether that be his relationship, whether that be with his family, whether that be in the church house, I just need to get him stirred up. Stirred up. So let's just say Christian has a girlfriend, right? So one day, Christian and his girlfriend, enticed by the enemy, right, gets into a debacle, right? I hope I use that word right. Get into a, get into an argument or something like that. Now Christian ain't feeling so holy. He ain't feeling so jolly. You know what I'm saying? But see, this is what the enemy got him. Sometimes you be in relationships that are so toxic and you can be in such a bad argument, it can you can push away from God without knowing. So now the argument Christian got in with his girlfriend, right? Y'all follow me. I hope y'all help. He the, the, the argument Christian got on his girlfriend was so bad, Christian... Went a day without reading his word because he was so mad he did not pray. He was so mad he did not pray. And guess what? You took a day off from Christ. You can't take a day off from Christ. I'm sorry. You can take a sabbatical from anything in this world but the Lord because you have to understand the enemy that you're facing. You got to understand the enemy that is after you. So now he got you out your word for a day. That's it. That's it. That's all he needed. There's the window. There's the window. And see now, Christian's so stressed out. Christian ain't been drinking in a long time. So now Christian goes out and have a couple drinks. He know he only can do two double shots without getting tipsy, but he had four double shots, right? So now I know y'all like, this man giving detail after detail. I'm giving you the tales, right? Take the head off the coin. I'm giving you the details, right? So Krishna had four double shots, right? Now he's physically not feeling good because that alcohol, he went and stopped at Waffle House. Now he done put grease on top of alcohol. Now physically, you are in a state where you can't do nothing. But cut on the TV. Oh, now you, now you, now you, now your system is full of alcohol and grease. You feeling sluggish because you putting stuff in your body that should not be in your body. And instead of reading your word, you cut on trash TV. You cut on trash TV. And now you feeding your spirit with everything coming into the world. Not that you just watch the TV, but you you, you feeding your spirit because you feel so bad. You just want to take your mind off how you feel. Next thing you know, it done been three four days since you done been in your word. Let me tell you something. Once you get out your word for a consecutive amount of days, it's really hard to snap back into it. Because by the whole time you ain't been in your word, life's still going on. Stuff doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? Stuff doesn't happen. You feel what I'm saying? So now you now 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 you now you're not alert to what's going on. Now you get up and you go to work. And today's the day you come to work. Two minutes late. And your boss say something to you. The devil like, okay, now I want you to say something to him about him being late. But don't mention just today. I want you to mention every other time he's been late. So now you get pulled into the office. You talk about why you're being late. And I'm not like, what is this man talking about? I'm talking about how the devil gets you in a cycle. It's different strokes for different folks. But this is the main way. For this situation, I'm just letting you know, right? And it could be different things depending on what a person's uh, issues may be, right? So now the manager call you in the office and she like, well, you know, Christian, you have been late six times since you started here. Oh, now Christian feel tried. Now Christian feel tried because you bringing up stuff from three, four, five months ago. And now you feel like in your heart, Oh, you been wanting to say something. Gotcha. Now the devil says, spirit of offense, go. And now the spirit of offense is hovering over you all day. Now, because one thing is us as a people, especially us as black people, right? Once we feel tried, it's hard to feel untried. 
Once you feel tried, now you feel like everybody trying. So now you so pissed off, guess what? Some of your work assignments are not being done right. You know what I'm saying? Some of your work assignments are not being done right. And now guess what? People are sending your work back to you. Hey man, yeah, you didn't you didn't package that palette right. You didn't shrink up that palette right. And now because the spirit of offense is doing the little Kim over you, you know, put your lighters up. You know what I'm saying? Now that the spirit of offense is doing this over you, now you just feeling tried. What did man mean? Now, now, guess what the devil do? He gonna talk to your homeboy that ain't gonna quit his job, but gonna agree with everything you got going on. Hey, I want you to take your break at 315, cause that's when Christian gonna be in there. Now all of a sudden he take his break at 315 instead of 320. I know y'all like, dang, what is man talking about? Man? Cause I been there. So now you in there with your homeboy, he like, but what's up? What wrong, my boy? You ain't yourself. You usually come here smiling, praying, humming gospel music. What's up? Man, when folk trying to man, it started with Miss D. She always tell me how I'm late. Hold on, I ain't been late in four months. I ain't been late in four months. And I was late two minutes today. But what about all the other times I was on time though? What about all the other times that I stayed over for her? Now you comparing. Now you comparing. Now you feeling used. And now you feel like no nobody appreciates you. And now you're born, you're like, man, yeah, bro, I feel you on that, my boy. They tried you, because they don't, they don't never do little Fred like that. Now you over here thinking about little Fred. You know what? Little Fred, you hit you with you hit the wee bay. You like, oh, you hit the wee bay. Now you like, oh right, what? Little Fred, don't be doing that. I done had to shrink around all all, all little Fred palettes all the time. What you mean? And the and, and the devil just sitting back like this. Gotcha. Hit you with the Kanye West, gotcha. Gotcha. And then you call one of your friends that don't work there and you start talking to your partner and tell them everything that's going on. But wait, you on your way home. And you've been doing good not listening to secular music. And when I say secular, I'm speaking Ghana, Thug, Rich Homie Kwan, Kwando Rondo. Who else out here these days? Little Baby. Don't listen to young boy. Because you might just come back to the job and try to unalive some people. So now you've been listening to YB on the way home. And letting all those instrumentals and those throw off your yo 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 your spirit. And the in the in the enemy's putting all his music in your head. I wish you or would try me. I'll pull up on you and come and see. I kind of, you ain't going to get, and then now you're on social media. And now you're seeing all the drama that's going on in social media. You see all this drama. And now you're just like, now you getting secondhand embarrassment. Like, man, they tried that girl, JT. I would have threw my phone too. Now you so engulfed in how you feel, you ain't even thought about the word of God. And the Holy Spirit has a quiet, still voice. And he's just trying to sit there like, my son, just, just, just pull back. Just pull back to me. Just pull back to me. You know what I'm saying? Now you mugging your manager when you come in like you affecting their paper. Let me tell you something. They going to get rid of you before they get rid of them. You know what I'm saying? So now, now it's a month too later. You don't have the worst two months of your life. All because the enemy... Let you think that it was all great. And you let your guard down. And you let your guard down. And you didn't, when you got mad, you didn't stop it. You kept going in it. And so now you're on the phone. You just get to that part one day when you were at work. And you just like, man, I don't, I don't, I, I, you, you, you slacking off. You're no longer trying to do it for the Lord. You're no longer trying to please the Lord in the work day. Not understand he gave you the job. Now you're just like, you know what, man? See, if I quit, I could probably go back to my old job. There you go. Trying to go back to Egypt. 
trying to think about the bread and the meat they have when you just left that job for a reason. Or you go back to old school, I could always get a warehouse job. That's us as black folk. That's us as African Americans. That's us right there. I can always go get a job at the warehouse. I know how to drive a forklift. I could easily go up there to the temp agency and go down there because I could just do that for like two or three weeks. And when I do that, I'll just get me another job. But then hold on. Not remembering that you left the, 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 the warehouse for a reason. You was working 12-hour shifts, six-hour days. You can't even do four tens no more. You can't even do four tens no more. And now you think you're finna go home after work and put in application, but guess what? One week turn to two weeks, two weeks turn to three weeks, three weeks turn to four weeks. And you're like, dang, I quit a good job for no reason. All because I was mad. And now you're working another job to try to stay afloat. Man, you got rent. Car note lights. First of all, you ain't got no type of savings. And when I say no type of savings, I'm not saying y'all don't save money. But if you got a whole pot, man, and you got a whole car note, and if you got a whole baby mama, if you got a whole lot of stuff going on, that five, six hundred in your savings ain't going to hold you over till you get another job. You can go get the CDL. You know you don't want to go back over the road. You know you don't. And see, we run to what's easiest. Man, I was in the trucking business. Let me tell you something. Ain't nobody more miserable than a truck driver over the road. And a truck driver over the road with a family. Money does not sustain your happiness. Because you feel like, oh, if I go back out there and get on the road, I ain't got no boss. Then when you finally get into it with one of the shippers or one of the receivers and your boss call you because you showed up late to the drop off at 12 a.m. or they unloading you too slow and you don't make your next pickup. Now the enemy hit you with, man, you staying away from your family. They don't appreciate you. They don't appreciate you. You the one not going home to your family every night. You done drove from New York, New York, to, to, to Santa, Santa Barbara, California. You see your family twice a month for two days at a time. Now you say, baby, I'm coming home. And now your wife like, I want you home, but what about these bills? What about these kids? What about everything? And you just like, baby, we'll figure it out because this is our favorite line. Us as us as us as us as a colored people. Because I still get one more full check. <laughs> Let me tell y'all something. That one more full check line. Should be, you know what? I told I told my wife yesterday. I said, baby, whenever we get our house, and whenever I get my man cage that I know the Lord gonna bless me with, I'm gonna have a shrine of quotes just all over my wall. I don't care if it's from Maya Angelou to freaking Nelson Mandela. I'm gonna have my favorite quotes, and I gotta put that one on a gold plaque at the top because I still get one more full check. That is the pinnacle. That's the Mount Sinai that we praise God on in the black community. That last check. And you be so mad when that last check is $600. You over there calculating what days I work. <laughs> you were like, okay, what, what, what days I work? I worked at Monday. I worked 16th and the 17th and the 18th. 21st, but I left early because that's the day I quit. Man, but when the time went in, now you hitting up little Fred at work. <laughs> little Fred, when the pay when the pay scale go in? 
Did it go in on the on the 21st or the 20th? Little Fred don't know nothing because he got a job. He don't care. He just know he checking on Friday. Because he going to work every day. And now he up there like, yeah, man, you know. Uh, I think time don't go in. But time don't go in to next week. So all the hours you work. Yo, 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 yo. They going to be on your last check. Little Fred lied. What 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 uh what the ball guy saying? Why did I get married? Sheila lied to you. <laughs> she uh, no, she said Trina Trina lied to you. She said I, he said he said I think Sheila said no, he said Sheila said just like you said, Sheila lied. Sheila lied. Now you think you got a forty hour check? Boy, you got twenty four hours on that check. No LMA. You got twenty four hours. And they still took out your insurance. And they still took out FICA. They took out your Medicaid and everything. So your last check was $636.82. And you ain't even getting all of that because your account was overdraft $12. Because of the Apple Music. Right? Because, because of your Apple Music, because of the Hulu and the Netflix came out. Or that gym membership you still ain't used that you signed up with uh, two days before the pandemic. You still ain't called and canceled that. So now you now you in a negative. Right? So now it ain't even 632. You walk with like 596. Now you just like, oh man, what I'm gonna do to pay this. But you have yet to sit back and identify. I really just got finagled back into the same cycle. So, Chris, why do you say all that? I say all that because you have to understand that the enemy keeps you in cycles intentionally from the day you say you're going to start something. Man, let me tell you something. If you start a new job Friday, Monday, next Wednesday, Next week, you need to have in your mind, this is what your prayers should sound like. Father God, I thank you for allowing me to have another opportunity to receive income and steward your money well. Father God, not only do I thank you, I pray that you help me remain vigilant because my adversary is like a royal lion, always trying to seek who he can devour. Lord, I come against the stronghold of the cycles of keeping me bound in the same cycle of quitting and restarting, never being able to fully pursue the goodness that you have for me. But Lord, as I stay village, I am walking into an atmosphere that I'm going to assume don't know your light, but let your light shine through me. Keep me sober minded. Help me stay away from all things that will keep me unaware of the spiritualness that's going on in my life. Help me remember that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but Father God, we wrestle against uh, principalities, authorities, powers, rulers, and spiritual wickedness in high places. Lord, my adversary is the enemy and it's always been the enemy and this enemy is constantly studying me, Lord. Unfortunately, Father God, I am flesh and I was created below the angels and I do not have the same spiritual wisdom as my adversary the devil. But luckily, not luckily, but blessed am I that your spirit lives in me because greater that is in me that is in this world. And you have already conquered the world. You have conquered the devil. You have won the war. And your spirit lives in me. And because I live my life and you live your life through me and because, Father God, I give my life to you, I let you operate and keep me in a spiritual mind so I can see the tactics of the enemy that I can rebuke, renounce, denounce, bind and cast the outer darkness far away from me so I can continue to pursue my goals in Christ Jesus because you have given me grace and sufficiency in all things to complete a good work. Y'all, I just freestyled that. I never prayed that prayer day in my life. That was strictly God that just said that to y'all. I literally just freestyled that on everything I love. Call AJ and free and put me on Freestyle Friday because I promise you I just freestyled that whole thing. That was God. So if you don't take that to heart, you just willingly trying to, to, to be caught up in the same cycle. So once you understand that you're in the cycle of emotion, be aware of your adversary. I want to give you some scriptures. I got to give you some scriptures. 
the first scripture I'm going to go to, because a lot of y'all keep saying First Peter uh, uh, 5, 8, and you're absolutely right, because it's definitely the one I was going to give y'all. But I'm going to give y'all this scripture right here. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted and joined to him by faith in him as Savior, he is a new creature, reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit, the old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Part of getting out of the cycle is understanding who you are in Christ. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are not the same person that you were. When you went under the water and was baptized in water and God baptized you with his spirit, you that day became a new person. And you are trying to go back and be this new creation in your old lifestyle. Let me tell you something about the Lord, uh, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that I believe everybody on here that's listening to me this long has accepted, right? I pray you have. If not, I know you will. God is not going to settle. God is not going to change what he already said. When he rose again off the cross and said, I have given you the keys to the kingdom and I have given you my spirit to do all things in this world. That's what he meant. But it all starts with you having a little bit of self-control. And you have to understand and make a conscious decision. Do I want to be the old Chris or do I want to be the new Chris? So what does the new Chris, you gave me the old Chris, what the old Chris would do, but what does the new Chris and the new creation in Christ Jesus, that Chris, how do he leave a job? Look for another one. Instead of going out with friends and family and doing the hokey pokey and all these other things, if your job is that bad, let me put a pin in this. Let me just say this. Because even my brother in Christ had to tell me this. Stop acting like God care about what job you have. Oh, let me drink some water. Stop caring or stop thinking God cares about the job you have. Because in truth, that is all selfishness. That's what you want to do. If you go to God and say, God, I want to be a chicken for him. Because some of y'all might try to go be a chicken for real. So let me just say something else. Lord, I want to be a chicken for him. Be a chicken for him. Because your purpose in Christ Jesus is to save souls. Are you trying to spread the word of God as a chicken for him? Are you trying to go get a farm so you can build a, a, a Bible study place where you and your chickens can invite people over to spread the gospel? So stop asking God, God, do you want me to work here? Understand, God can lead you places. But this is a good God. You got two jobs, right? God, do I want to work at Fashion Nova or do I want to work at Forever 21? I got I got two jobs, right? Let me just, I'm just, I'm, remind y'all, put a pin in the conversation. We're going to go back to what I was saying. You got two jobs here, right? Yeah, you know, all that stuff. You got two jobs. When the Bible says God gives wisdom to all those who ask ungrudgingly, you have to believe it without being double-minded. That God is going to give you an answer. God is not going to descend down on you. Like, yes, take the job at Forever 21. No. God knows what's on the other side of each one of those doors. And what God may do is one of two things. It's your choice. Do you want to drive 15 minutes to work or do you want to drive 20 minutes to work? He could put it to you like that. But he would give you peace about whatever choice you decide. Or he may give you peace about one job over the other. It has been times where I have taken jobs that paid less over jobs that paid more because the peace that surpasses all understanding was on this job. And I was like, wait a minute, Lord, this job pays almost $20,000 less than this job. Why I have peace about this job? Because you asked me a question, and I'm telling you which one would better benefit you. Y'all be getting mad at God for answering your question. 
Because you're looking for an audible answer when he's giving you peace about the situation. He's giving you peace about it. So I'm saying all that to say, if you say, Lord, I gave this a chance. I gave being a heavy equipment operator a chance and I don't like it. God is like, okay. So you approach my throne, but without no boldness, what, what do you want, my child? Because look at what he does in scripture. Even when Satan came, when he was meeting with the angels, he still asked Satan, what's your purpose for being here? Even though he know all things, no toy lanes, but God wants you to say it. You feel what I'm saying? He wants you to say it. Lord, I don't want to work here. Okay, what you want to do? Lord, I don't want to go to school for this. Okay, what you want to go to school for? Because some odd way, we feel like that our choices is going to mess up God's plan for our life. That's 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 the part that you got to grasp. Like, really? The all-seeing, all-knowing God, the creator of the heavens and the universe, you think because you chose to work at Forever 21 over Fashion Over that you're going to mess up his plans? That's what I think is funny. But I think you forget that God gave you free will to choose. Because I believe that God is so sovereign, so mighty, and so powerful that he can accomplish his will no matter where you decide to go. No matter where you decide to go. So, when what a, what a new creation in Christ does when they are faced with a trial on their job, I always say this is what a real true create creation in Christ does. Lord, I'm pissed. I am upset. I don't want to work at this job no more. And you know what God going to say? Why? See, it's, his why is not a why like how we may say why to one another. His why is a why. Talk to him. Because God is always trying to change your perspective on things. Right? So God say why? Because God don't keep asking you the question and you're going to answer it. Because he's going to give you his spirit to understand. Because, Lord, I just can't work here no more. Why you can't work here no more? Because I just can't be around certain people who is people. Well, it really ain't everybody, but, you know, me and Fred started dating and now we ain't together no more. And I just can't see him every day. Okay, so why are we in this situation? Because I dated a co-worker. Why did you date a co-worker? Because I wanted to talk to somebody. Didn't you learn the last time not to talk to a co-worker? Yes, I did. So why did you repeat the same cycle? Because I didn't trust you. I thought that this time would be different. I fell into the trap of insanity. And I let this man, Fred, tell me something so different that really wasn't different, but got me to fall into a cycle that you already told me not to fall into. So it all comes down to me, Lord, I didn't trust you. I trusted myself. And I thought that this time would be different. And that's how I ended up dating Fred. And you was right, as always, and it didn't work out. Now look, I don't want to be at this job no more. You know what God gonna say? Let me tell you what they gonna say. Well, baby girl, let me say this, because God is not an evil God. He is a great God. He's a loving God. And he wants the best for his daughters and sons. And you know what God is going to say to you? God is going to say, well, baby girl, you got two options. You can leave this job and you can look for another one. And I'll bless it all day and tomorrow. Or you can Ask for forgiveness for not trusting me. And I'm going to forgive you, right? And you can stay at this job. And you can use this as a learning opportunity. And every day you go to work and you see Fred, you let it be a reminder of how you did not trust me. And I will give you the strength to go to work every day and fight through those emotions. But you're going to have to do the work along with the faith. And I'm going to do the rest. But you're going to have to go to work. And you're going to have to endure it. Because if you leave right now. You're going to do the same thing again. Somewhere else. He gives you an option. And a lot of times. What we do is take the easier option. Lord I just take the other job. And I won't do it again. And God say okay. 
Absolutely. He blesses you with another gig. And you fall into the same cycle. Because you didn't want to sit through the pain. You didn't want to sit through the... You didn't want to endure it. Because sometimes when we make a mistake, we don't want to see it no more. We didn't want to see it no more. But uh, let me go to James because y'all finna get on my nerves. And y'all ain't even say nothing bad. <sighs> let me give you James 2. James chapter 1 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish your work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives it generously to all without finding fault. And it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all their ways. Did y'all hear what I said? You should find it a joy Whenever you face trials of many of many of, of many kinds, because it talks about endurance, the one who endures to the end. Let me be transparent. A lot of you that lost a job, you wanted God to pay those bills so fast. Lord, it's coming up. They keep giving me the letter. They denied me for unemployment. They denied me for food stamps. My mama, who usually have it, don't have it. My people I go to for money don't have it. Lord, what am I going to do? And God is just like, hmm, hmm, interesting. Is God holding his hand back because he hates you? Absolutely not. But God has said, I want you to feel this. Because the Bible says God disciplined the ones he loves. We're so quick to try to get out of our feelings. And sometimes you just have to sit in it. One thing me and my wife talked about one night is I told her, because she's very loving and very affectionate, and so am I. But when I'm going through something emotionally, my wife used to try to hug me, kiss me, cuddle me, you know, all the good things a wife does. But for the first time last night, I told my wife, I said, babe, when I'm in my feelings, I really don't want to distract myself. I need to feel it. I need to feel what I'm going through. Because if I don't feel it, I won't remember it. If I don't remember it, I'm bound to repeat the same thing again. It could be simple stuff. Like I got a scar right here on my forehead. You know where I got that scar from? Popping bumps. You know how many times I'm a scar on my forehead, popping bumps on my forehead? So many times. And it'd be so crazy because I'd be in the middle of popping puss. I said puss. Not what y'all be popping on the weekend. I'd be in the middle of a popping puss. And God would say, son, why are you doing that? You're going to scar your forehead. You have a lighter complexion. It's not like you uh, black and easy. It's not like you're dark. People going to see it. You're not a woman. You're not going to put no makeup over it. And now you walk around with a big scar on your forehead like you Prince Zuko from the last album. And it's like, why? 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 It's so crazy how we lack discipline in such things as not popping the pimple. I ain't got nothing against you watching Mr. Pimple Popper. But on your face, you know you're going to scar your face. Why do it? Why? Just like a woman prepares for her menstrual, you should prepare for anything that will cause you to bleed. Oh, my Lord. Jesus Christ. Oh, I just, I just don't understand. Jesus, you're good. You're good. But the goal is to endure to the end. Right? The goal is to endure to the end. Another verse I want to give y'all. <clears throat> this verse was about the flesh and the spirit. Right? This is about, this is Roman 8, 6 through 11. So when I gave the whole example about Christian doing it the wrong way. Oh, wait a minute. Let me finish telling you what the right way is. 
Take the pen out of the conversation. He goes to God. I mean, you go to God. You ask God. He asks you why you want to leave. You talk to God. You make a decision. Now you make a plan and let God direct your path. Okay, instead of going out for tacos and tequila, instead of going over Mimi house to hear about her and her baby daddy drama, instead of going to hang out with my boyfriends and playing uh, DMZ all night, I'm going to come straight home and I'm going to put in job applications. The little bit of personal time left, I'm going to use that and I'm going to use that to go on the interview. Instead of me calling out, you know what I'm saying? Yes, at Romans 8, 6, 11. I'm going to get that, sis. Instead of me calling out, I'm going to use my personal date to go to my job interview. And I am not quitting this job until I get my new clock in card. Straight like that. Don't stop your money flow. Whatever God door is open, he open. But you have to remember that is the right way to leave. That is the right way to break the cycle. See, the cycle is doing what your flesh wants you to do versus what the spirit is telling you to do. Your feelings are forever going to change. People will love you today and hate you tomorrow. You might like cheesecake today and hate cheesecake tomorrow. I don't really see that happening, but we love cheesecake. The point is, your feelings are fickle. And that's okay. It's okay that your feelings are fickle. But what needs to happen is you to say, I trust God so I lean into his spirit. I won't be controlled by my flesh. Romans 8, 6 to 11. Now the mind of the flesh is death, both now and forever, because it pursues sin. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace. The spiritual well being that comes from walking with God both now and forever, the mind of the flesh with its sinful pursuits is actively hostile to God. It does not submit itself to God's law since it cannot. And those who are in the flesh living a life that caters to sinful appetite and impulses cannot please God. Let's break this down. Ooh, I need some water. I need some water. Let's break this down. Straight up. You are feeding your temple nothing but fleshly things. Physically, emotionally, and spiritually. You are entertaining fleshly conversations. You are entertaining fleshly uh, things. Now, I'm not saying you can't watch an episode of uh, How to Get Away with Murder or Unalive if I don't want to get banned on TikTok. I'm not saying you can't watch a season or episode or something. But this is what's dying to your flesh. Do I need to binge watch three episodes of Annalise Keating? Or can I just watch one or two episodes and let that be? Let that be. Straight like that. Straight like that. Come on. Do I need three tacos? And for my fellas, do I need four, five tacos? I dare eat two tacos. You know what? I got even one better for you. Hey, y'all gonna hate me for this. <laughs> what, what, uh, what, what my man's be saying on those, on those videos he's making? Oh, they gonna say I ran off with this one. <laughs> let, let me tell you something. And I'm not gonna go back and forth with you, as he says. The foods that you're eating. Is the reason why you can't tap into your spirit. <sighs> I gotta look at my other camera now. The foods that you are eating is why you cannot tap into your spirit, man. Because you're feeding your flesh things that is not even supposed to be in your body. Argue with your mother or father, or auntie, or uncle. Argue with any one of them, but I'm not going to argue with you. The stuff that we're eating, we're not supposed to be eating. Now, you know, God may have permitted it back in the day because, I mean, it was different back then. You wasn't eating lab room. Like they're growing your chicken in the lab now, and y'all still pulling up to McDonald's. 
I heard a guy once say that if you look at the back of the ingredients of a box and you can't pronounce what's the ingredients, but I should tell you something. Because you don't trust that God gave you the right foods to go into your body, fruits and vegetables. You don't even do it in moderation. You Taco Tuesday, you Wine Wednesday, you Tequila Thursday, you uh, Fries Friday, and now you sodomy me on Saturday. Straight like that. And then you pour stuff in your spirit on TV, on, on, on social media. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to just be honest with you. Don't hate me. Don't hate me, sis. I'm going to be honest with you. As believers in Christ, a lot of things we shouldn't really just be intaking. I don't get me wrong. You might go follow the shade room and say, Slaughter University is follow the shade room. But I'll tell you why. I used to follow them, you know, just because back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Just because back in the day. And then God, I was like, Lord, I'm going to follow all these unpure things. You know what I'm just saying? Uh, TSR was the only one I really followed. And then God said, Chris, no. I need you to be aware of what's going on in the world. Because if you shut yourself off and you cut yourself out from those things, then you're not going to be able to relate to your generation of people. But here's the difference. It's a difference between reading the title of something and completely falling into it. You 600 comments down talking about uh, Carly Russell. You 600, you 600 comments down. And now you so mad because you disagree with 80 people about a topic that has nothing to do with Christ. And that's just a God. We laugh at things and we joke at things that are serious problems. You know, when the whole Carly Russell situation happened, my heart was really moved for that girl. I'm going to just be real. Let me just, let me speak on that. I was really moved for that girl. That young lady. I'm not going to say girl. That young woman. Because me and my wife was in the car and she mentioned it. And my wife was talking about something she saw and she showed me a meme. And I don't know why she showed me memes while I'm driving. She be trying to kill us in this car. I'd be like... She said, and she's laughing at it. And don't get me wrong, I'm all for a good joke. I was a class clown, you know, growing growing up. But I felt for Shawty. Because I've never done on you, like, for somebody to have you out there faking your own kidnapping. I said, I can't even judge, Charlie, for real, for real. Yes, I'm uploading this. Yes, sir. I'm, 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 I, can't even judge, I can't even judge, Charlie, for real, for real. Because I'd be lying if it wasn't a couple girls that had me out here doing stuff. Crazy. Let me tell you something. I done, I done, I done waited at some stop signs before in my lifetime. I'm just being real. And she's the only one that got caught. She's the only one that got caught. But those are the things that we're not talking about. We make a joke out of everything. We make a joke out of everything. Come on, that girl didn't think it would go that far. She did what we did, and we always trying to get the attention of somebody else. But that happens when you have soul ties with people that are not your husband and not your wife. Let me give y'all a breakdown of, of what a demon is, right? Because some of y'all be so... In y'all zone, when y'all doing what y'all doing, what's that stuff y'all used to say? Uh, demon time. I wasn't even on my walk as serious as I was when people first started saying that. Uh, maybe I was. But when they just say demon time, in the back of my mind, I'd be like, demon time. Demon time. I don't know, Lord. Some, some just don't sound right about that to me. You know what I'm saying? Before I got the knowledge that I got now. But anyways... Let me give y'all an understanding of how demonic entities work. Demons can't eat, right? They don't eat physical food. They feast off your sin. They feast off your darkness. So when the spirit of gluttony comes over you, 
He is enticing you to be a glutton and he's feasting off your sin. Same thing with fornication, adultery, unalive in people, all these type of things. That's how they feast. You know what I'm saying? Can we as believers call it what it is? That girl had some spirits talking to her. They said, you need to fake your kidney. That's what's going to get his attention. And you know what they did? Not only did they entice her and tempt her to fake her kidnapping, they made it go viral. Have you ever thought what a person's life is going to be like after that? Because we'll move on. We'll start talking about something else by Friday. I get it. But names we don't forget. I can say Trayvon Martin right now. I can say uh, George Zimmerman right now. I can say Casey Anthony right now. You probably ain't thought about naming three of them all day today. But I bet you as soon as I say their name, the whole situation come back to your head. Her name is forever going to be etched in somebody's head. Can you imagine what type of life that's going to be like? If she don't know Jesus, I pray she go to know Jesus because I know Jesus can turn it all around. But that's what happens. When you listen to demons, they, they feast on your sin. Oh, I'ma just, I'ma just spark up. Ooh, I feel like I'm coming for somebody. I'ma just light it up. I'ma just take a couple shots. Do you know that when you alter your state of mind and you're not sober, it's a reason why Peter said, be sober minded. Because the things that you put in your body can alter your state of mind. And guess what? You will start seeing things. And guess what? The things you're going to start seeing, you're going to wish you didn't see. Because you opened up a door for them to come in. Hello? How you doing? Man, come on. I... Hey, you ain't got to listen to me. You have to regain control. That's why it's called self-control. <laughs> what Cat Williams say? It's control of yourself. It's control of yourself. I can sit up here all day and say, I don't want to watch these type of videos anymore. But what am I doing? Just like the, the enemy is not coming and grabbing my hand. And, and making me do this. Like, I, I, and Kathy Cutter. Kathy Cutter. He's not making me do this. I'm doing it. Because I don't have control of myself. Back to the social media point. You can't be on social media watching things. Uh, when they drop the trailers of I Spice at Young Miami. And you, and you see all these voluptuous curves and, and, and hip dips and all these other things and you talk some I don't struggle with lust how you fight how you gonna fight lust and you feeding yourself lust if the bible says remove the eye cut off the hand if it's causing you to sin you gotta protect yourself because these are the things that the devil is using to keep you in the cycle. Oh, he don't want to watch adult videos anymore? Oh, he don't want to watch the videos no more? That's fine. That's cool. See, what the enemy does is you ain't been watching adult videos in a minute. So what they do is they send that spirit to tempt you at nighttime when you buy yourself. Right? When you buy yourself. Then, when you don't fall for it, you feel good about yourself. And then next thing you know, you get on Instagram and boom! Double cheeked up on a Thursday afternoon. You like, yikes! Y'all think that photo, y'all think that video of uh, the basketball girl, Angela Reese, that the shade room posted in that tight blue, 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 blue dwarf dress. 
Do y'all think that was just, y'all, y'all really think the Bible says you do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Y'all probably think I'm running off. But do you think that that video was just completely innocent to you maybe if you don't struggle with it? But see, the enemy knew that somebody that was trying to do right was going to be on Instagram at the right time. Angela, why don't you put on this tight little dress and post it? Then the Shade Room posted. They got over 20 some million followers. And somebody sees that and they say, I'm not going to swipe. I'm not going to swipe right. I'm not going to swipe right. Grah! I don't swipe right. Grah! Because you think it's so innocent. You really believe in your whole heart that this stuff is accidental and the world is just doing what the world wants to do. And I. My children suffer for what they do not know. You keep trying Satan like he just some regular adversary. Go ahead. Keep going. Keep trying him like this stuff ain't playing. Nothing, thank you, Tyler. Nothing is coincidental. It's to the point where you have to be so spiritually, uh, uh, you have to discern so much spiritually. You gotta understand running into an X is not a coincidence. That's what the enemy wants you to think. Well, he do go to uh Georgia State, and I'm down here at five points, so it makes sense. Oh, he do go to AT, and I am over here. By the school, it makes sense. It is over 400 million people in America. In each city, in each state, it's probably over 10, 15, 20 million people per city. And you finna tell me that it's just a coincidence that I ran into my ex or I ran into my sneaky link or I ran into somebody else just on a random Tuesday? So your girl Sanjanique, aka Nick Nick, has partnered up with Slaughter University to bless us with some custom merch. If you want some Slaughter University merch or just want some custom merch in general, hit her up and her business be unique. Promo code in the description. I didn't even plan on leaving the house today. Lord, Father God, I just pray that they understand what I'm saying. Because they saying I'm running off with this. You think. You think. That is a coincidence. That you just got in a relationship. You think it's a coincidence you just got in a relationship and all of a sudden your ex won't close you? Oh, man. We got to wake up. Because you try and say it now. You try and say it. And, 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 you, you try and say it now. At this point. Anyway. The flesh. The flesh is anytime you choose. Yourself. Over what God wants. Romans 8, 6, 11. Now the mind of the flesh is. I read that part. Notice how it says sinful appetites and impulses. I got one for y'all. Cursing somebody out because they tried you is a sinful impulse. That is your flesh. That is your flesh. Let me ask you something. When the last time you felt tried and you just let somebody have it? When? When? When was the last time? Why do you feel? Because that's another cycle. We're talking about cycles. That's another cycle. When have you honestly sat there and thought to yourself, you know what? Every time I'm having a good day, somebody try me. Every time I try to get into the word of the Lord, somebody takes my phone with some, with some, with some, eh, 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 eh. Every time I pick up my Bible, I get sleepy. Every time I get ready to go to sleep, I get scared. Oh, y'all don't want to talk about that. Some of us are scared to go to sleep at night.
God does not give you the spirit of fear, but a power, peace, love, and a sound mind. You have to be focused on the righteous things of God, the upbringing things of God. Why is God's children afraid to go to sleep in their house where they have authority over? Yikes, Amundo. What's going on? When the last time you went and got some oil and you anointed your house? And you just said, you prayed over and you anointed your house. And if you live with a man and you and you got a husband, he should be anointing your house. When you get sleepy reading the word, you have to rebuke that spirit. See, if you don't know a spirit by name, you call it out by its function. In the name of Jesus, whatever spirit is causing me to be sleepy while I'm trying to read this word, the Lord rebukes you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. I bind you and I cast you out of the outer darkness. And you have to believe in what you've seen. You have to, you have to, I use olive oil when I anoint. Right? I ain't saying go get no vegetable oil and get your old chicken grease and slap it on the door. I just stick to the word. I use olive oil when I anoint my door. I don't y'all be putting no chicken grease with no breadcrumbs or nothing like that on your door. You already you just got the roaches out. You don't want them to come back. You know what I'm saying? I'm teasing. But but those are the those are the things that you have to understand about your enemy. You rebuke that spirit that is causing you to be sleeping. Why are the children of God, like I said, why are the children of God fearing going to bed at night when you have the authority over your own house? Especially if you're a husband, you are the priest of your household. Ladies, if you live by yourself, then it's on you. You anoint your house, you pray over that oil, you anoint your house. You cast out every single spirit in the name of Jesus that don't have no legal right to be there. And you have to make sure that you ain't gave no spirit illegal or illegal right to be there. Because they're legalists. You can, you can cast out all day, but if you got an open door, they ain't going nowhere. They ain't going nowhere. But when you sit and you pray to God you ask Holy Spirit to reveal to you all the doors that you have open God show me the cycles that the devil has kept me in God show me the cycles that I have the strong because a cycle ain't nothing but a stronghold Lord what is the, what is the cycle we especially as black people we don't like to sit and meditate on the word and think and let God reveal to us because it hurts. We as people, we block out bad memories. You could be in a cycle for something you that happened to you since you was a kid. But I'm saying all that to say, the devil is so strategic. Understand what the Bible says about him. He is a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. When you go read Job, what he's saying, Job, when, he, when, 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 when God asked him, he said, where you come from? He said, walking to and from in the earth. Obviously, the devil doesn't have no rest. You know what I mean? You shouldn't have to turn on an episode of SpongeBob to go to sleep at night. You shouldn't have to sleep with a nightlight on to go to sleep at night. But when you feel in your spirit with the shade room and all these other secular things, you watching lustful things and you wondering why you having the type of dreams that you having. Hey man, like I said, piece of hood shirt on. I just came to deliver this word. So, that's your flesh. And I'm going to say what a lot of people don't want to say to y'all. It hurts. It really hurts. Going against your flesh, it hurts. You live in a sinful body. Deny yourself and get on TikTok. Bro, we're not even making hamburgers no more. Let's just say you did want to eat a hamburger. But you not, bro, they not even making hamburgers no more. They got hamburgers with fries and cheddar cheese and hot Cheetos and pickles 
and they deep frying, they deep frying the cup you drinking your juice out of. I should, bro. It's every like, bro. Do you do you honestly think that this is a coinky day? When the last time you just went out and food wasn't involved? Remember back in the day, some of y'all might be younger than me, but remember back in the day, we used to just go out, go to the movies, go to the park, do anything. We can't go nowhere without food being involved. I dare you and the next time your girlfriends or your homeboys link up, I dare you to suggest something that don't include food. I'm not saying don't get nothing to eat after a long day. But y'all meeting up at brunch. Then you going out for dinner that night with your other homegirl and you got breakfast in the morning with your parents. And then the stuff you eating, come on, man. Dead this, dead that, putting all that dead stuff in your body. You see this? I ain't even trying to be vulgar, but do you, you see these? These are supposed to be pecs and I'm working on them in the gym. I'm working on them in the gym. But you know, this comes from eating female animals. The hormones from the female animal is causing my breastplates to look like y'all's. That's the truth. The hormones that they put in, in food. Why do I have breast assist? And you know how the devil try to spin it? It's big boy season. Wait a minute, but the truth of the word of God says that my body is the temple of the Lord. If God, when he gave the Israelites a temple and he wanted to be a certain way, why isn't my temple a certain way? Why am I not putting things in my body? Because Satan is going to try to destroy the body. If he can't stop the purpose, he's going to try to stop you. If I gave you a bottle of juice and said, it's just a little poison in there. It ain't going to do nothing right now. But in 30, 40 years, you might get diabetes. You might have to get your foot cut off. You might lose a lung. You might get cancer. But it's 40 years from now. Don't worry about it. A lot of you will be like, no, I'm not drinking that. Well, they put it in your face. We finna start growing chicken out the lab. I love business. I love business. I love how business works. I love economics. I love all this stuff. I get it. If I buy something for a dollar to make profit, I can't sell it for a dollar. Make perfect sense. But I've been saying this since before TikTok. You can't sell a chicken sandwich for a dollar. You just can't. You can't sell me a chicken sandwich for a dollar. Unless it's not costing you, it is costing you less money to make it. I'm just being real. If you selling me a chicken sandwich for a dollar, that means that it's costing you probably 10 cents to make a chicken patty. That's how business works. It's no way somebody went to a farm, grabbed the chicken, killed the chicken, plucked the chicken feathers, boiled the skin, get the feathers off, break the chicken down, process it, put it on the truck, send it to one of my millions of locations, put it on some bread, and sell it for a dollar. It ain't what you want to hear, but it's the truth. Jesus has revealed to me, he said, Chris, it's over with. The stuff that you put in your body, ugh. The devil can't stop my plan for your life. But he can stop your temple if you let him. Why are people losing foot and toes later on in life? We're losing loved ones. We're thinking being big is a pleasure. Oh, I love me. You can get you a big man that's muscular if that's what you want. But this and this, this shows undisciplined in Christ. Mind you, I'm not talking about y'all. I'm talking about myself. This is showing undisciplined in Christ. This is showing how undisciplined I am 
in Christ. Pecks like a woman, big belly, without my beard, double chin. This is showing that I have no discipline. I got to fix that. But I can't fix it by just thinking about it. I have to pray and say, Lord, you gave me this temple for your spirit to dwell in. And I can't put this stuff in my body. So guess what? I can't come to your cookout. I can't come to Thanksgiving. I can't come to your house. I'll be bringing my own food. And then they got this whole vegan movement. Hey, man, look, I don't got all the facts. I'm not saying I'm smart. But God gave me fruits and vegetables. He didn't tell me to deep fry the mushrooms. And I'm going to just be real. You're not going to give me no mushroom and tell me it tastes like chicken. I believe my God said a mushroom is a mushroom and a bird is a bird. And that's just what it is. Now, do I like the whole, uh, what is it, a lion mane, uh, mushroom and oyster uh, mushrooms? Uh, baby, put that on your list of things. I want to try those. But I'm not going to deep fry it. Uh, do that for me. I ain't finna deep fry it. You know what I've been eating? Watermelon. My body rejoices different when I put the fruits of the earth in my body. I ate a cup of watermelon and I was satisfied. I wasn't sluggish full. I wasn't hungry. They try to tell you you need protein, but look at a gorilla. What protein shake is he taking? But I bet you won't go fight him. Because we have been programmed. Because Satan has been doing this since the beginning. This ain't new. You can go to the gym five times a week. Eat all the steak and protein you want, but you can't beat a gorilla. And all he eat is plants. And he'll rip you to shreds. I'm just saying, y'all, I hear you, Chris. I hear what you're saying, big dog. But but I'm just saying, my birthday coming up. And well, let me tell you something. When I came back from Atlanta, I stopped at Publix and got me a, a, a watermelon that's already cut. It was like three dollars. Oh, Chris, but I go on. What if I go on a road trip? Hey, man. Just like it's a McDonald's on every exit, it's a Walmart. Go in there, go to the produce aisle, get what you need to get, in, and leave. Y'all so bad. Y'all so bad. Y'all, y'all can't even make mashed potatoes from scratch no more. Man, I remember one time I was dating this chick, and. She was cooking, and don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to talk about her, but I was dating this young lady, and when I tell you, Lord have mercy, she was cooking one day, and I saw her boiling some water on the stove. I didn't know what she was finna do, but I remember her saying, I'ma make chicken and mashed potatoes. We didn't buy no potatoes that night, but this is what she telling me, so I'm like, maybe she got some, some, some potatoes somewhere else. No, this young lady opened up a bag of powder. Instant is what they call it. Poured it in the pot. Stirred it for like a couple seconds. And said, boom, mashed potatoes. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. This is witchcraft. This is witchcraft. Y'all laughing at me, but I'm so serious. She pulled out a bag of powder, poured it in the boiling hot water, and it looked like mashed potatoes. This is sorcery. <laughs> this sorcery. They say ramen noodles is, what is it, babe? Point zero point one away from being plastic. So, 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 I'm saying all this to say, why are we putting this stuff in our temple? Why are we putting this? Yes, I, I ate a, a mashed potatoes from a bag. And I'm over there contemplating my life. Like, dang, it tastes like mashed potatoes. But I'm so stuck on what I just saw. I'm like, I said, hold on. I go look in the bag. 
I said, maybe it was potato chunks in there. I just didn't see her smash them. Now I'm in there whipping up. I said, let me boil some water right quick. Just a little bit of water. I put the rest of it in and I stirred it. And there go the potatoes. I said, the devil is alive. In all my life, I ain't never seen nothing like this. Oh, no, 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 no. They done switched up the game. I'm used to seeing, you know, people shred the potato, boil it, soften it, whatever. Maybe add a little heavy cream and all this stuff in there. And, and that was my potatoes. But this girl, she did me something different. Now, if you've been in the instant, like a lot of y'all went to college. And I know we used to get it what we can. I'm not judging your past. Because let me tell you something. I done been to ramen noodles, strawberry shortcake, oatmeal pie, honey bun. But I'm 29 years old and look at it. How has that stuff served me? I now have to go back to the gym and burn the fat. But I also have to make sure I'm eating correctly. And let me tell you something. It hurts. It hurts. Because now that my body's not getting that added sugar, I have headaches more often. But guess what? I get it. This is what my body is detoxing this stuff out. What I eat, vegetables, fruit, zucchini, squash, watermelon, uh, honeydew, uh, the basics, avocado, beans. And let me tell you something. It's not a bad life, you guys. Imagine how much weight you would lose if you ate like that and then went to the gym. By the time y'all get on my live in three months, I might look like a new person. I'm tired of going into the stores and and um I, I can't find a, a 3X or a 2X. We still recording. A 3X or a 2X. Like I'm just being real with you guys. I make cabbage soup that's delicious. Filling. I might get some rice and some beans and stuff, and I and I wrap it in some seaweed. Bro, I'm just saying. I'm not judging what you what you did, but where you going? Cause let me tell you something: the food that God put on this earth, they charging you an arm and a leg for. And y'all better start getting some fruit and keeping the seeds. Why you can? Because now they GMO and everything. Now they seedless watermelon, seedless grape. I don't know what in the what in the hold on. How you gonna take the seed out of something? But anyway, that's what I'm saying. You feeding your flesh. You're feeding your flesh, and you wondering why you can't tap into your spirit side like you want to. Because your body is so clouded and, 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 and full of gook. You know, I'm going to share something with y'all. And this is my thoughts. By all means, if you're sane, I don't want you to take this and, and run off with it. I'm giving you what something I'm talking to God about and what I'm praying to God about when it comes to the foods we eat in the spirit side, right? Two instances in the Bible I brought to the Lord. When Satan revealed himself, when Satan came to the Garden of Eden, and when he approached Jesus. Those are the two times in the Bible I saw was Satan manifested himself, right? Let's start in the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, they ate nothing but fruits and vegetables, right? All the seed-bearing plants of the earth. Meaning that they was in tune. I feel like they were in tune with their spiritual side. So when she saw the serpent talking, it, it, wasn't, it, it wasn't that she was tripping. She was in tune. Because her body and her mind wasn't clouded with bull. Because... Demons cannot have um, their own physical body. 
They have to manifest in the physical. You have to do witchcraft and stuff for them to take over somebody else's body or whatever else. But in the Bible, it just said Satan appeared. He appeared in the form of a serpent. He heard the serpent talk. Let's go to Jesus. This is what I've been talking to God about. Like I said, you ain't got to run off with this. This is something I'm still praying on, but this is what I've been talking to God about. If you go to the scriptures, it said that Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And then after he was baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him, he fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And then the spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Who was he talking to? You have to understand, God took on flesh. He took on flesh. He didn't bring all his, his full power with him. He was in the flesh. That means the things that he was doing with the spirit of God in him, we can do those same things. Who was you talking to in the wilderness? Who are you talking to? Satan, right? How? It didn't say Satan came in the form of a serpent. It didn't say Satan came in the form of a transformer. It didn't say Satan came in the form of a bumblebee. It said the devil showed up. How did he see the devil? Spiritually. Spiritually. Is this making sense? I ain't trying to scare nobody. And by all means, I'm not trying to say nothing unbiblical. I'm telling you what God is showing me and I'm praying about for confirmation. But it seemed like the devil, he was able to see the devil and be tempted by the devil because he was in tune with his spirit. Understand that you can see things in the spirit, but the food that you put in your body you can't do that because you too you too weighed down. You too weighed down with all these toxins and stuff. Because my thing, my, my, my thing is this: 40 days and 40 nights. If 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 Jesus had the Holy Spirit, I believe he could have did the same thing. I believe Jesus could have did the same thing. He could have still quoted scripture without fasting. I believe in Jesus that he could have did that. But in order to see the tempt, I feel like you had to be in tune with your spirit. You got that. You're not on food. You prayed and you fasted and you and you, you, you had a relationship with God and you read the word of God. Kevin Gates. Kevin Gates, which is a man who's already admitted that his mother was a Nephilim, her father was a Nephilim. Yeah. Y'all listen to what these people telling y'all. Kevin Case said on the interview, he said his father was a Nephilim or something like that. This man, out his mouth, Nephilim, uh, uh, a giant. One, that one of the offspring when the fallen angels slept with the, uh, the women. He said that. That was the evil spirit of him talking. Y'all think these folk be lying to y'all. Kevin Gates out his mouth, a man who is surely possessed, said out his mouth, when you fast for 40 days, stuff started getting weird. Your mind start opening up and you start seeing things. Came out his own mouth. It came out his own mouth. So I believe that fasting really does put you in a spiritual state. That you can be vigilant and you will see things. I believe you will be able to see spirits on people. You will be able to see or uh, uh, discern things better. You'll be able to, okay, that's not her talking. That's the enemy talking. That's the spirit of depression talking. I believe when you're really in tune with your spirit, you can see Spirits on people. Y'all ain't got to listen to me. Anyways, verse 9. 
However, you are not living in the flesh controlled by the sinful nature, but in the spirit. If in fact the spirit of God lives in you, directing and guiding you, directing and guiding you is not a child of uh directly guiding you, but if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him and is not a child of God. If Christ lives in you through your natural body is dead, though your natural body is dead because of sin, your spirit is alive because of righteousness, which he provides. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. You have to be walking in the spirit. You want to break them cycles in your life? You're going to have to be walking in the spirit. You're going to have to understand the root of things. Okay, that just made me mad. Okay, the action made you mad, but what about it made you mad? Did this person trigger me? Did they trigger me or did they trigger the 16 year old me? Did they trigger me or did they trick you or did they trigger uh, the eight year old me? Right? What, what, what happened? I personally haven't fasted for 40 days. It's always been a goal of mine, but you have to start off slow. Let me tell you, you have to start off slow. We'll see, I'm sure I'll get there. You, you can't be walking in the flesh trying to accomplish the things of the spirit. That's just one on one. No flex, Washington. That's just one on one. You know what I'm saying? You have to pick up your cross and carry it daily. You have to die to your flesh daily. Daily now. I gave you an example earlier. Let me, let me go back. Pull up that I dip on them. Yeah, I know. Let me go back. What is dying to your flesh daily? Instead of watching two episodes of Scandal, I'm going to watch one. Like, I understand certain habits you're not going to quit right away. Lord, please don't rebuke me for saying this. But some stuff you can't quit cold turkey. You can't quit cold turkey because you're going to go right back to it. Even when you go to these professional facilities, right? where people uh, are getting off drugs. Do you know how they get them off? They wean them down. When they go in there and they and they off that, 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 that run, that hair in that run, they don't stop giving it to them. They give it to them in doses, step by step, right? So if you are in partaking in, in reefer, right? Or alcohol. Right, start small. Instead of two, one. Instead of one, go to a half. After a half, let it be gone. Step by step, you have to break these habits. Period, point blank. And I'm not going to go back and forth with you. I love how you say that. I'm not going to go back and forth with you. You know what I'm saying? That's just being real. You stuck in these cycles because you don't want to break away from your flesh. Your flesh is saying, I know my friend is calling me with some drama. I'm not going to answer the phone. I need to be spending time at work. Instead of talking on the phone for three hours, I'm going to talk on the phone for 30 minutes. That's dying to your flesh every day. We have to stop acting like Jesus is not returning. Understand when Jesus returned, he's not returning to parlay. He's not returning to be like, hey, I miss y'all. No, he's coming to destroy this place and rebuild another one. Are you going to be there? Are you going to be there? You know, in the second part of my notes, look, I have all these notes and I didn't even get to them. Messing with y'all. Well, I kind of did. This is another huge cycle that the enemy has us in. But you fail to realize it. The cycle of unforgiveness. Oh, let me try some water. The cycle of unforgiveness. Right? The cycle of unforgiveness. Straight up, bro. I'm going to just be real with you. 
all that unforgiveness in your heart. I hope you know every prayer you done prayed with unforgiveness in your heart. God was like, not hearing it. I'm not hearing it. Come back to me when you forgive. Oh, Chris, I can't. You don't understand what they did to me. You didn't understand what they did to Jesus. But yet he gave forgiveness and asked God to forgive them on the cross. In the middle of his persecution, he's asking God to forgive them. Job had to go back and pray for his friends. Now, I'm going to tell you something. A lot of you all, like me, man, stop telling me about unforgiveness and how, how can I forgive? I know the scriptures. I know the Bible says my prayers is hindered if I'm not forgiving people. I know what the Bible says about forgiveness. I know I got to forgive seven times 70. Lord, how do I forgive? I'm so glad you asked because today you're about to learn how to forgive. If nobody else told you, I told you. And I got two parts. This is the first question. When you feel like you don't want to forgive somebody, you just got to ask one question. Do I want to be forgiven? Oh, man. Oh, man. If that don't set your tone right, because you ain't perfect, you done did stuff to people too. You got to ask yourself, do I want God to forgive my sins? And if that don't open up your heart and say, you know what, maybe I do need to forgive some people. Then I got something else for you. Understand that forgiving somebody is releasing the debt. This person borrowed $20 from you. They owe you $20. They can't pay you $20. You say, it's cool. Don't worry about it. Did I say that you have to lend that person money again? No, I did not. I did not say you have to lend that person money again. I said you release them of their debt. They no longer owe you $20. Some of you as believers feel like it's some, some transgressions that happen against you that is beyond forgiving. And I'm here to tell you, no, it is not. I don't, I not saying I don't care. Like, I don't care what happened to you. I'm saying I don't care what it is. God said you have to forgive, period. If you was abused physically, verbally, mentally, somebody lied on you, defamed your name, drug you through the mud, stole your toes, stole your deodorant, and came and gave you a hood the next day, you smelled it on them. Girl, that's my life. I don't know it's not. Lie to your face. You got to forgive them. You have to forgive them. Every time you think about, do I want to forgive this person? Remember this. Do you want to be forgiven? If your answer is yes, then you have to release that person of their debt to you. Because if you judge in a person, then guess what? That means you're going to be judged yourself. And if you sinned against God, you know what those wages are? <laughs> They're death. The wages of sin is death. And because you didn't want to forgive, now God has to judge you of everything that you done did. And if you sinned, which you did, which I'm pretty sure you did, mm, yeah, the price for that is death, dog. Unalive. And I'm pretty sure you don't want that. Stop confusing forgiving and reconciliation. Okay? You can forgive. You can pray for that person, want the best for that person, and you can never talk to that person again. But see, a lot of you love that part. Y'all love that part. Right, Chris. I ain't got to talk to him no more. Mm -mm. I ain't got to talk to him. Ah, yeah, I forgive. But bump, right? Because mm -mm -mm. some of you use it as an excuse to not forgive. You think the absence of the person is the presence of forgiveness. <sighs> Jesus. <sighs> I came to deliver. I came to deliver the word today. Hot and ready. He said, I just said it. 
Jesus just gave me the word just in my brain. That's what you just did. The absence of their the absence of their presence does not mean the presence of forgiveness. Mm. Their absence doesn't mean forgiveness is present. You have to forgive. Meaning, you got to stop this ill will. If something happens to them, you need to pray for them. Job had to pray for the same friends that tried to tell him that he was sinning against God. The same people. After God already dealt with them. Ooh. Ooh. Mind you, Job was the one with the balls, the dead body and all that stuff like that. Then his friends got hit with the same plague. Meaning God already dealt with them for their sins and Job still had to pray for them. God, let them go. You ain't doing that. You ain't doing that. You're not happy to see that the guy that played you is happy, happily married now. Ooh, my lips are tingling from the spiciness of this conversation. See, you're not happy to see that the guy that played you is being faithful to someone else. Your first thought is, nah, man, you know, he finally got it right. Man, he put me and a lot of other people through the ringer, but I'm so glad that he's finally got it right. I'm surprised y'all still here, because after this, I would have left long time ago. Because I ain't finna talk to me like that. <laughs> But thank y'all for letting me talk to y'all like that. I'm just being real. That's the truth. And some of you are holding on to unforgiveness with people you are with every single day. You are laughing and joking and smiling and parlaying and partying and loving on and sending happy birthday text messages to people you still ain't forgave. Some of you ain't even forgave your parents yet. You ain't forgave your siblings yet. You ain't forgave them yet. Not one time. Because you feel like, because they family, I got to keep them around. Oh, that's good. Yourself. You ain't even forgave yourself yet. And you wonder why all these thoughts play in your mind while the devil be talking to you and doing all this stuff. You know why? Because you haven't forgiven yourself for the mistakes you made. Why are we speaking about forgiving people? I got one even better for you. Where it go? Because I wrote it down for y'all folks. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Keep it in the book. Can you forgive yourself or somebody else with or without an apology? That's why we that's 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 why you in that cycle. Because you 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 need an apology to forgive. Oh 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 you need an apology to forgive, right? That's what you need. You need an apology to forgive. What if you don't forget it? Some of you have been hurt with people and you have no contact to that person. You don't know where that person at right now. That person can be in um, Bomb Chicka Wow Wow. That's what my baby said. All around there with Phineas and Ferb. And you have no idea where this person at. But you waiting on an apology. You waiting on closure. Let me go deeper. You waiting on an explanation why that person did what they did. Because you think that the healing would be a little bit better if you understood why. What you need an explanation for? People are just messed up and do messed up stuff. But you beat yourself up because you can't forgive yourself because you got to make sure that it, it, it wasn't me. Let me tell you something. No matter what you did doesn't give anybody a right to treat you less 
within the way God treats you. First one to say it here, Slaughter University. Oh, so you think when you get married, your spouse not going to hurt you? Oh, you think because your wife or your husband is lacking in an area that God is not going to hold you to a standard? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I I ain't mean to hurt your feelings tonight, but let's be real. Let's speak from the, the forgiveness of marriage for a second. Let's just let's just be one hundred. Your wife and your husband they're gonna hurt you. It's it's, it's 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 inevitable. Don't be mad at it. You're getting to know each other. People hurt you unintentionally sometimes. Unintentionally hurt you sometimes. And 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 let and let me let me let me lighten the load for you guys. A lot of times when people say hurt in marriage, y'all mind jump to cheating. Y'all mind jump to cheating. I'm so sorry I got y'all up late. I know you got to go to bed. Y'all got to go to bed. Trust me, I will post this on YouTube for y'all to catch later. Your mind jump to cheating every single time somebody says in marriage your spouse will hurt you. That goes to show that you got a lot to let go. You are trying to protect yourself from being cheated on too much. If somebody gonna cheat on you, dog, they gonna cheat on you. It ain't nothing you can do about it. You can check their phone. You can do whatever you want. What that boy doing that TikTok? You can look at his phone while he typing it. You know what I'm saying? You can, you can do that all you want to. If they gonna cheat, they gonna cheat. You know, one of the most uncomfortable conversations me and my wife had to have, because my wife, I, I've been cheated on a lot. My wife been cheated on a lot. You know what I'm saying? And we've had this uncomfortable conversation. And I told my wife straight to her face, I said, baby, I'm not going to be nobody less than myself. It don't matter how many times you check my emails, my phone, whatever you want to do. Babe, and I had to say it like this. I said, babe, if I wanted to cheat on you, I would. You can't stop me. Whether I did it professionally or if I did it uh, sloppy. If a person going to cheat on you, they going to cheat on you. I said, you are trusting too much in me and you are not trusted enough in God. I just want to speak on cheating. You have to trust God that the God that created you lives inside the person you chose to marry. And you have to trust that God speaks to the person you chose to marry. And you have to trust that God when let or let it go unknown if this person did something to you. If my wife cheated on me, I don't have to go looking for her. Because you know what? The Holy Spirit is going to tell. And if I cheated on my wife, she ain't got to go looking for her. Because the Holy Spirit is going to tell on you. Believe it or not, he going he to tell. And let me tell you something. It ain't going to be two, three weeks later. He going to set a fire in your spirit. Something ain't right. Call your husband. Where he at? And then all the pieces are going to fall together. Oh, he going to tell it. So when I say you are going to get hurt, trust me. Your spouse might never yell I, I, I pray your spouse never cheat on you. And I really believe some of you will never go through that. But I promise you, he gonna hurt you. She gonna hurt you. And it ain't gonna be cheating. Can I just give you something simple? I ate something of my wife's that she left in the refrigerator one time. And she was hurt. I'm gonna just be so real with you. She was hurt. Because... She wanted that. She was thinking about that all day. It was a pint of Talento ice cream. Talente. Talente. Look, she, she got to let go of that unforgiveness. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, she had some Talente ice cream. And I thought she said, the rest is yours. My wife is the type of person where she'll eat on something, save it for later. That's just her. Me, 
I got a 24 hour rule. You got 24 hours to eat it. If you don't eat it in 24 hours, it's up for grabs, baby. But she was really hurt by that. She been in class all day. She been studying hard. She's coming home. And can you imagine having your mouth fixated on something? And you go open up the freezer. It's kind of like how DW felt when they took her snowball. You know what I'm saying? Y'all too young to remember Arthur. But when they took DW snowball, that girl was hurt. So when my wife opened up that freezer and saw that her talente was gone, I understand, sis. She wanted to choke me out. God, she had spiritual righteous anger that day. And then you go look in the trash can and you see it right there. And then you go look on the bed and you just see your man rubbing his belly like he just had the best snack of his life. That girl could have sprayed the whole club up that day. Y'all look at it like, Chris, that's just ice cream. That hurt her. You know why? Because what's hers is hers. And I don't have no right to it. Now, it might be different in different people's relationships. Some of y'all might have that relationship where y'all don't care, you eat my leftovers, whatever it is, what it is. But it don't give you the right to people's stuff. It don't give you the right to people's stuff. My wife hurt me sometimes. And it just be little stuff. Like, just, if I'm talking to you and you pick up your phone while I'm trying to vent, that hurts my feelings. It made me feel like you're not listening. Was it intentional? No. But in that moment, you hurt me. So, let's take the ice cream situation. <laughs> Not on my word. <laughs> Let's take the ice cream situation. I ate my wife's ice cream. She's hurt. She's upset. She's mad. It was already her plans to cook dinner for me tonight. Regardless if I ate her ice cream or not, she planned to cook dinner. If she didn't cook dinner out of spite of what I did, she's wrong. God is going to judge her for that because you're doing something out of spite. If I say I was going to give my wife $100 to go get her nails done, because that's all it's going to cover, maybe. And usually like $120. So if I give my wife $120 to go get her nails done, but she make me mad on the way to the nail salon, I can't just be like, nah, ain't no nails getting done today. That ain't right. The moment you stop doing your husband duties and your wifely duties because of what somebody else did, you're wrong. God is going to hold you accountable for everything you did. When you pull, when you get to heaven, I'm, I'm not saying it's going to be like this, but if God pull out a scroll or a tablet, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? and show you all the stuff you did. You can't stand before God and say, but man, man, but little Fred, but Keisha. What they gotta do? God talking about what you did. What Rasputin say, how you did? What did you do today? Norbit, I'm just being real. That's what we talking about. We're not talking about this. We're not talking about this. That, that's what y'all finna talk about. What did you do? What did you do? Because Rasputia cheated don't mean Norbert go out there and cheat too. Is Miss Ding Ding gonna be there? <laughs> Miss Ding, you know, you know, don't worry, I ain't talking about no Miss Lane Lane. I'm 
talking about, man. Stink thing. Get that thing there. Yeah. How you doing? God want to talk about you. Come here. Let me talk to you. I don't want to talk about everybody else. I want to talk about you. So can you forgive with or without an apology? And I got one even better for you. Some of you know you have hurt people. And they may have forgiven you and you have yet to apologize. This week, this week, this week, this way they finna run off, babe. You have yet to apologize, right? Let me tell you something. I was hurt by somebody. And out of me being hurt, my response was not Christ-like. Meaning I wasn't slow to anger. I wasn't none of that. I was very... Boy, y'all got me messed up. And you know what God put on my heart? He said, you know, you need to forgive. And I said, you know what, Lord? I forgive him. I just pray that the best life over him. And da 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 Sound good. But how about an apology? Apology, Lord. They, you know, I forgive them, Lord. I pray they forgive me too. No, I ain't got to apologize. I done blocked them already, Lord. I'm not. I'm wrong. Hey, if God convicted you to go and apologize to everybody you hurt, that's you. But moving forward, understand something. Those who have the access to apologize also have the obligation to apologize. Ooh, wee. That was a, ooh, that was a detox for you. I'm going to say it again. Those who have the access to apologize to some, they, some people they hurt, you also have the obligation to. Those who have the access to apologize, you also have the obligation to. It's non-negotiable. Because, and I wrote this down, the point of apologizing to a person you've hurt is not to hear them say, babe, I'm still recording because I want to make sure everybody get this. The point of you apologizing to a person is not to hear them say, I forgive you. The point of you apologizing to a person that you've hurt is to hear God say that was holy. That was holy. You don't want to, it ain't to hear, I forgive you, because it don't matter if they do or don't. The apology is to hear God say, that was holy, Chris. You didn't want to do it in your flesh, but that was holy. You just died to yourself and you picked up your cross. You did the opposite of what your flesh wanted you to do. Man, that's the purpose of, of, of being a believer, being a Christian, is to walk holy, to be perfect as Christ was. That's the goal. And, and while we on this topic, one of my last segments, I want y'all to hear our mission as believers in Christ. First, you have to understand who you are in Christ. New creation, to save souls, be a light, an example, be sober, be vigilant, and to be aware of the enemy, building relationships, praying without ceasing, and um, and not being of this world. I got scripture. Some of you already know what the scripture is. Romans 12, 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then will you be able to test and improve what God will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. You cannot test what God will is or uh, 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 be approved of what God will is if you do not, if you are conformed to the pattern of this world. <sighs> I've been wanting to speak on this for a minute. So that's why I say this is my last segment. But stick around. What I want y'all to understand something is don't get caught up in today's time of how people are presenting the gospel. 
right? Understand something. Your purpose as a Christian is to save souls. If you want to apply for a job in Alaska, you ask God, can you save souls in Alaska? Because those are the crowns that you are going to lay beneath his feet one day. How many people did you bring to Christ? Whether they accept the Christ in front of you or not, you're there to save souls, plant seeds. In today's time, we're doing too much arguing. And I've said that before in one of my pods. Too much arguing and back and forth. Oh, this person a false prophet, that person a false prophet, this person upside down. Where in the Bible did God ever say, call out a false prophet? He said, beware. Beware of false prophets. Beware of the Pharisees and in, 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 in their leaving, in their yeast. That's what God said. Do not be conformed of this world. People should know you believe in Christ by your actions and your behavior. Stop arguing with people. Test the fruit by they, test the spirit, uh, the spirit by their fruits. A good tree can't produce bad fruit. A bad tree can't produce good fruit. you, do you support this this ministry or that ministry? You can just say yay and you can say nay. God said let your yes be yes, let your no be no. No, I don't. If they want to go into detail, then you can you can give detail if you want to, but understand something. You never know what God is doing in somebody else's life. Right? Now, some people are just off their rocker false. It is what it is. Beware that person does not teach the gospel. Call it what it is. It is what it is. You ain't got to make videos and clips and do all this extra stuff. Just beware of false prophets. And understand what your mission is as a believer. It's simple. Are you in right standings with Christ? Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Oh, they're going to say, they're going to say I started to pop with this one. Well, excuse me, baby. <laughs> did, did he? <laughs> you feel better after that? <laughs> so, I understand. <laughs> better out than in, I always say. <laughs> so, let me say this. I'm going to start a pot. As a new creation of Christ, as a believer, this earth is not your home. And you care way too much about what the people of this world is doing. I'm just being real. You care way too much about what the people of this world is doing. Too much. As a believer in Christ, you are to be an example. An example of Jesus Christ. We are not of this world. Our home is the kingdom. We are to bring, we are like ambassadors of the kingdom. What an ambassador in America is, they represent their country on foreign soil. Right? Right? So you are representing the kingdom of God on foreign soil. So let's just be real. Let's just get into the facts. And they're going to say I started to pop with this, but let me, let me just be real. Young Miami taking her son to the club. She's not wrong for that. Oh, Chris, what you mean? They're going to make this a clip. Make a clip, but go back and watch what I'm saying. Young Miami taking her son to the club is not wrong. You know why? Because she is not a believer in Christ. She's doing exactly what they do in this world. The opposite. That's it. Stay out their business. Stay out their business. Two people that don't believe in Christ shacking up is not wrong. Stay out their business. Because that's the rules of their world. Now, you as a believer in Christ, you do it. I'm going to have something to say. Because you believe a certain standard, right? You believe what God says to be true. Meaning that I'm going to judge you righteously. But everybody else, leave them folk alone. We don't live here. This is not our home. We are ambassadors of the kingdom of God. And we are trying to save souls and bring them 
to the kingdom. Because what they don't know is that the world that they love so much is coming to an end very soon. And if you don't know Christ Jesus, you're not going to live in the world that's not going to burn. You're not going to live in a world where moth and, and, and people can't break in and moth and rust don't destroy. That's why we're here. You care too much about what non-believers are doing. Leave them alone. Leave they, they parades alone. Leave whatever they're doing alone. But if you see me doing something that goes against the word of God, you need to be on my case. Yeah, if you see me doing something, if you see me not walking in righteousness, if you see me, you correct me. You pull me to the side in private and you say, brother, that was not right. That was not godly. And you back it up with scripture. You rebuke me. And then we're going to pray together and we're going to go on about our merry way. But what folk doing in this world is not your business. I love the example of the whale. The whale's Whales don't breathe underwater. They have to come up for air. They come up for air and then they go back in the water. Their environment is the water, but that's not. That's not what that's not what they, 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 they breathe at. So you are too far in the world, you're drowning. You gotta come up for air in Christ and get back down here to business. Stop standing behind people that don't believe in Christ telling them that they're wrong. Do we know what they're doing goes against Christ Jesus? Yes. But you cannot hold somebody to a standard they don't believe in. You be the difference. Stop walking in defeat. Stop acting like you are not a child of the most high God. Stop acting like you are not walking around with the spirit of God inside of you. When people see you, they should see something different about bro. Some something, something different about Shouty. She she all uh, she different. And then people need to come to you and say, what's so different about your life? Well, honestly, brother, I gave my life up to Christ. Because I no longer conform to this world because this world is going to end. I had a God, the true God, that loved me so much that if he don't do nothing else for me in this world, he died on the cross for my sins so that I didn't have to live in eternal damnation. And being a follower of Christ, he has a set of standards that I have to follow because that shows I truly believe in what he did. Well, man, I can't give up this and I can't give up that. You'll be surprised what you give up when you give in to Christ Jesus. That's it. Only thing you should be telling non-believers, Jesus loves you. He wants a relationship with you, bro. You can't just start talking about what you can't do. That'll turn anybody off. Think about it. If you met somebody, and I've said it before, I said it again, if you met somebody, and the first thing y'all start talking about, well, we can go together, but you can't do this, and you can't do this, and you can't do this, and you can't do that, you'd be like, uh, I don't even know you. I don't even have a relationship with you. I don't even love you like that to stop doing what I'm doing. Ooh. Ooh. You have to let people understand how much God loves them, what he did for them, and allow them to build a relationship with God. Because the Bible says, one plants the seed, one waters it, but God brings forth the increase. Every time I'm on a shade room, I see some Christians in the comments talking about what a non-believer doing. Is it sad? Yes. It's sad because that was not the original design God created humanity. And it's not the original design that God created the earth for. It is a horrible feeling when you see God's perfect creation being perverted by the enemy. It hurts. 
and you know what it's like to live in that life and you want people to see the light, but they do not hold to the same standards that you hold to. Because in that way, you kind of try to make it seem like this world is going to get better. Sorry, it's not. Go read Revelations. God talks about what's coming for this world. What we're doing is playing hungry, hungry hippo. That's the best way I can put it down. Some of y'all too young to remember that game. But hungry hippo, you hit the thing and, and you try to get all the, the, the balls. That's what we're doing. Because we know Pop's coming. We know our father's coming. And when he's coming, he's coming with a righteous foot. And what he's telling you is, look, come on, y'all. I'm, I'm just trying to save as many souls as I can. Because when God asked me what I did, I did this. I might have started my walk late, God, but you gave me five talents and I gave you back ten. You gave me two gifts and I brought, and with those two gifts, I brought 40 people to the kingdom. God might say, that's exactly what I need. I need you to go get 40 people. I didn't need you to get 100. I didn't need you to get 200. I didn't need you to get a million. Stop looking at other brothers and sisters in Christ that are doing things and they're touching hundreds and hundreds of millions of people. If my followers never went up, it don't matter. God gave me a set people. These are the people you're talking to. I'm going to send some people to you. They're going to follow. Some people are not going to follow. They're going to keep scrolling. Great. Cool. I'm not worried about that. God leaves the 99 to go after the one. Maybe you're not supposed to come in my store. Maybe you're supposed to go to somebody else's store. I love y'all being here. Just, just being real. We just trying to gather. Hey, man, look. So guess what? When you walk on your new job, when you walk in your new business, whatever, you set an atmosphere that people can walk into. You pray. You anoint your job. You anoint your business. You anoint your home. Set an atmosphere that when people of the world walk in it, they say, I feel good here. I feel good here. People don't know they dirty until they take a shower. You didn't know that you stank until you came back in the house and they said you smell like outside. Straight like that. Have a welcoming environment. Set the atmosphere of the Lord. Loose God's peace. Loose God's holiness. Loose God's greatness. Everything over your house, over your job. So when people come in, they say something different about this though. And when you're not there, they're going to say something ain't right. Jasmine, Jasmine ain't here today. Y'all feel that? Because when, you know, the the... The best compliment I ever got was one day, one of the guys I worked with, he said, Chris, when you here, I know God is here as well. Best compliment I ever got in my life was when God told me, he said, when you here, I know God is here as well. Y'all, nothing feels better than when somebody else can tell you that your presence brings the spirit of God along with it. That's powerful. That's that's real. And it, and it made me like, wow. You think people are not watching you. You think because people aren't agreeing with you that what you're saying is not true and you're wrong. And you're wrong. Continue to be a positive person. The Bible says Show kindness even when somebody else is showing you anger because showing kindness is like throwing rocks of coal, hot rocks on their head. You don't have to clap back. You fight the enemy with truth, God's truth. Yes, I might not be feeling my best today, but the word of God says that today is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and I will be glad in it. I don't care how you feel when you wake up in the morning. What did the Bible say? What did the word of God say? God said that today is the day I made. So you need to be rejoicing and be glad.
That should trump how you feel. That should trump how you feel. Right there. I love y'all so much. Get off my life.